Finally managed to pick up a TurboGrafx-16 after a whole lot of years of trying to find one. And we're going to go ahead and do a cap kit on it. This also includes the little tiny capacitors to fix the gel bar issues with these. That's about 30-ish years old. I'd say maybe more than that by now. And uh, just want to give it a nice little tune-up. It still works, but it's fine. But before I go get an EverDrive for it, I'd like to give it a little tune-up so make sure we got really good clean power going on. And uh, this will be a good test of the new Heiko soldering iron. That's in everybody else's video, so it might as well be in mine too. Alright, we got to take all the screws out. Uh, for these, you got to have the same uh, game bit that you would have to take apart a Super Nintendo. Or N64 or GameCube. Let me just pull all the screws out and then we'll pop the lid. Alright, so here we are with the shell off. Now, of course, the number one problem with taking one of these apart is the RF shielding is soldered to the board. So you have to go in and remove all the solder around everywhere to get the shield off. So. Fun times to be had, but we'll get her done. Also, a whole box of capacitors. So, um, a lot of these are going to be, I've got a bunch of original 1.0 Xboxes to do. I'll probably do a video on that. I've already done videos on the 1.6 and the 1.4, but the 1.0 has considerably more capacitors in it. Anyways, uh, let me get this RF shielding off of here. All right, we got the heat shield off. I took a combination of solder wick, solder pump, and that's a lot of solder. And it's a good thing we got that boy. I'm fixing to turn the temp down on it because I mean you had to have it up hot to get this old solder loose. But now that we're going to be actually doing some real real board work i'm going to turn it down so i don't scorch the board but it's a good thing to have a soldering iron that can actually get the job done so all these electrolytics all this stuff's got to come out and then somewhere in here are two little tiny capacitors that i'll have to use a pair of tweezers to get off the board yeah, look at that a fuse when was the last time you seen a fuse like that? Well, let's see. A lot of old flux on the board from when they originally made it. I wonder what that was supposed to be for. Hudson Soft. Yeah, see right here is why you got to be careful with the heat. Yep, I popped that one loose from the board. Got to be careful. Not like I can just go pick another one of these up at the game store. Yep, a lot of old flux still all over the board from when it was made. Alright, so we got our cap kit here. There's a lot of the caps to redo it, and then right here are the two littlest ones. These are the ones that do the gel bar fix. These are going to be a pain to do. So, But, let me get my capacitor map out and let's get to it. Alright, here we are, back again. One thing I had noticed about this board is that when NEC built these back in the day, they never cleaned any of the flux off. So not only am I having to clean the flux that I use to get you know the parts in and out, but I mean, the entire board is just covered in flux. I mean, I get they built things differently back in the day, but they did not clean any of the flux off this board. So I've been sitting here cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. Trying to get all the old nasty flux off of here before I go to reassemble it. So, 
And even the, I had to get on here and clean the crap out of it. It was just everywhere. I get all the Q-tip residue off. I mean, even on the top of the board, I mean, look at this. I got to clean all this off. This is all, that's all flux from when it was originally manufactured. It's just everywhere. They didn't clean it. I have one cap remaining. Well, okay, I have three caps remaining, but I have this cap, which goes in here. I don't really think I'm going to change it because I don't plan to use the RF in it ever again. Here are some of our new caps we installed. And what we got to do is I got these little teeny tiny caps for the gel bar fix. And I've got to get them somehow sandwiched in across some of these. I'll have to go look it up again. I think it's that C139, and I believe there's a C, I think it's this one, C134 and 139. You have to literally get them in and just bridge them across the legs of the uh, disc capacitors there. Alright, so let me finish cleaning this thing up, because it is just, I don't know why they shipped them out of the factory like that. That's just ridiculous to me, but anyways. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I got them little tiny capacitors in there. They're just bridged across between the between the legs. I don't really get it to focus, but there they are. Alright, so now I'm gonna put I already turned it on, it does work. Um, I don't want to run it long without the heat sink for the uh, 7805 there. So I'm going to go ahead and put at least that shield on and then we'll do some further tests. And I'm not going to change the cap in there because I don't plan to ever use that again. Alright, so we got the bottom RF shield on. There it is, all soldered back in place. Don't be the guy who takes one apart and doesn't put that back. There's also one that goes on the top, which I'll put on here in a minute. Um, still cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning and cleaning flux off this board. I mean, NEC just they just didn't clean them. Uh, there's a, most of the solder that came out between the RF shielding and the capacitors themselves. That's about how much solder I had to wick up off the board. I don't know what they used. Uh, I think this and the Genesis came out sometime around the same time and the Genesis when I did its caps They were nowhere near as a pain in the butt as these are. I don't know what they used for solder, but it's It's pretty nasty. So, I mean The new Heiko over there it handled it just fine, but oof. All right, I got my little screwdriver plastic in there just to keep the power from touching back against the board Lower RF shield is also the heat sink for the 7805, so that's why we have to put that back because you don't want to run it without it on. Not for a long time anyway. And there we go. Those lines you see are my phone camera. They're not actually there. Gel bars, that's for sure, they're gone. No more gel bars. Now I'm using the level hike. HDMI cable here. I'm pretty impressed with it. Now, is it perfect? No. But it's better than RF, that's for sure. Now I need to get a turbo ever drive for it. I was thinking about the what's the big thing that goes on the back that lets you play CD games as well. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it only has RGB out. 
So you'd have to get RGB cable for it, and then of course trying to get a retro tank, especially with the 5X right now, is just about impossible. So. Alright, so we know that it works. Let's go ahead and get it put all the way back together. Alright, she's back together and running. Ignore the wavy lines you see, that's my stupid camera to my phone doing that. And we have a thunderstorm outside. Yep, no more gel bars at all. They're gone. Color looks to be a little bit improved, I guess, over what it was. And of course, it's just playing over that level hike. HDMI out. Bill pulls the RGB signal. Goes through that. I know a lot of people hate these. But it works. I mean... That's about the only solution I know of for a Turbo Grand 16, short of RGB out to a retro teak. So she's good to go for another 30 years or so. Uh, the only cap I didn't change was the one in the RF modulator because I just didn't feel like pulling it apart to change it because I don't ever plan to use RF output on it. So. I guess now I need to get a Turbo Everdrive for it because Lord, I don't want to be the pirate, but Lord knows the prices of the games for this system are ridiculous. Uh oh. I think my huge car is cleaning. Your car did a little cleaning. A lot of good games I'd like to get for this, but the prices of them are pretty cricker. Pretty happy with the picture quality. I imagine this thing probably has the smearing issue like a lot of these HDMI converters do. If you're playing a side scroller, like if I had Bonk for it, it would probably have the smearing issue. But for the games I have, I don't, it's not really doing it. So, so anyway, one thing we learned: NEC did not clean their boards. That's a crap ton of plugs right there. Uh, the solder that came out was pretty yucky. And here's all of the electrolytics that came out of it. So we took all those electrolytics out. Uh, the only one we didn't take out was the one for the RF modulator. There it is. And we installed the two little tiny gel bar flex caps. Um, those go between disc capacitors at C139 and C134. You just bridge them in in parallel between the legs. And that cleans up the nastiness of the gel bars. I wish there was a fix that was easy like that for the Model 1 Genesis, but there's not. Alright, well this one's done. Um, I got a whole bunch of Xboxes to do. I won't bore y'all with all of those. I think I will do a video on the Model 1 Xbox because there's a lot more capacitors in those than there are in the 1.4 and especially the 1.6 where they reduced a lot of the parts counts. So, And with that, I'm signing out.